a treasure chest worth millions hidden in the Rocky Mountains, with only a few vague clues from a poem to discover its whereabouts. Thousands have attempted to find it, and some even died in their pursuit. This is the story of Forrest Fenn's treasure. Begin at where warm waters halt and take it in the canyon down. Not far, but too far to walk. Put in below the home of Brown. I think a lot of people were just attracted to that aspect of like having a purpose, right? You know, your purpose is to try to find Fenn's treasure, but also they found fun and a great love for adventure and the outdoors along the way. Shelby Cashman, an anchor at local news station KOAT in Albuquerque, New Mexico, has tracked the treasure hunt over the years. So, who exactly is Forrest Fenn? Here in New Mexico, Forrest Fenn had this art gallery and he was a prolific art and artifact collector. He was very well known in our area and he is also extremely rich. He has developed his fortune over decades and decades and also kind of a self-proclaimed eccentric. He's a Vietnam War vet, he was actually a fighter pilot and he's been an outdoorsman though his whole life. Like by the age of 14, he apparently was leading fishing expeditions in Yellowstone. He was a licensed cougar hunter. So his whole life has been in the outdoors. He initially actually filled this chest after he was diagnosed with cancer back in 1988. And his initial plan was he was gonna drag it into the mountains and he was gonna die beside his treasure. Well, turns out he survived. So he's like, okay, well, I'm gonna live. So let's let other people find my treasure. In 2010, Forrest buried a 40-pound treasure chest that was supposedly filled with incredible riches and artifacts. The chest is full of emeralds and diamonds and rubies and sapphires. So he's actually never confirmed how much officially the chest and then the contents is worth. It's estimated about $2 million at least. In 2011, he released his memoir titled The Thrill of the Chase. In it is a poem with nine clues, but what it actually is, is literally a map guiding people to a secret treasure that was buried somewhere in the Rocky Mountains. And so The Thrill of the Chase is the book that he then released to the public, basically saying, I buried some of my fortune somewhere in the Rocky Mountains, go have fun and find it. He said, this is for every redneck out there with a pickup truck, six kids who just lost his job, his wife, and lacks adventure. I want to get the kids out of the game room and away from their little texting machines and out in the, the sunshine and the mountains and the trees. You know, we're, we're not doing that anymore. Much like the clues in the poem, Forrest remained elusive about where the treasure could be. Not even his wife of nearly 70 years knew where it was buried. Who knows where the treasure is? Only me. And when they're sitting there with a treasure chest on their lap and they raise that lid, it's going to be something amazing to them. They, they may faint. It's such a beautiful sight. The treasure hunt garnered international attention. Through social media, potential treasure hunters connected and theorized about its whereabouts. The Rocky Mountains started to see more tourists in pursuit of the treasure, especially in New Mexico, where Forrest lived. In most recent interviews, he said as many as 350,000 people have gone to hunt for this treasure. He wrote this book, and then it was like a word of mouth thing, just like exploded. I don't even know if he expected it to get as big as he did. There have been people close. There have been people who have figured out the first two clues in my poem, but they didn't get the third, fourth, and fifth, and they went right past the treasure chest. And I'm not gonna tell them who they are because they'll go crazy. This area covers New Mexico, Colorado, all the way up into Wyoming. You go from desert all the way up to the Colorado Rocky Mountains, which is snow-covered, cold, and there's water. There's the Rio Grande going through all of this. The riptides, there's the water element of it. There's also just the vastness of it. There's not a lot of markers along the way. There's nothing really to identify where you are in the Rocky Mountains. And Forrest Venn didn't do anyone any favors. Like, he literally just said, somewhere in the Rocky Mountains, have fun. As the search's popularity rose, so did the controversy surrounding its creator. It's always kind of shrouded in mystery about how he really like amassed this huge fortune. And that's the way he likes it. He likes us all to be left questioning, how did he get the rubies? How did he get the emeralds? How did he get all these artifacts? So it turns out like he spent decades himself just going out on often controversial missions. So at one point he was so rich, he actually bought a site of Indian Pueblo land. And he went in and he excavated this ancient Pueblo Indian site. And so like, that's just an example of how he found some of his artifacts. 
it was very controversial. A lot of the native people called him like a plunderer and that he was coming into their land and destroying it and taking what was theirs and taking all this ancient stuff. And he basically said, I don't care. I bought this land and I'm going to do it. That's the kind of guy he was. I would love if somebody found it tomorrow. But if nobody found it for 100 years, that's okay with me too. When people first heard about the thrill of the chase, they wanted to go out and try it and get outdoors and figure it out. And then as the years went on, it became very controversial because people were not only getting injured because they were just traipsing all around the Rocky Mountains, they were going out there sometimes by themselves for weeks at a time and family members didn't know where they were. Sometimes treasure hunters never made it home. At least five people died in the pursuit in the Rocky Mountains. The five people who died searching for Forrest Fenn's treasure were Randy Bilyeu, Jeff Murphy, Pastor Paris Wallace, Eric Ashby, and Michael Wayne Sexton. Randy Bilyeu was the first to go missing on January 20th, 2016. His body wasn't found until six months later. Well, I think it's very regretful, terrible. Anytime a person goes into the forest, whether he's a deer hunter or a fisherman or anyone else, you, you, t you take a chance. Randy's ex-wife, Linda, spoke out against the treasure hunt and cautioned others in pursuit of the treasure. What's your message for them? Godspeed. Actually, make sure the treasure exists before you go searching for it. Do you believe it exists? I do not. The treasure is real. The treasure story is real. Randy's ex-wife was not the only person against the hunt. In June 2017, Colorado pastor Paris Wallace also went missing. After his body was found, the New Mexico chief of police at the time, Pete Cassettis, implored for us to end the search. I want Mr. Finn to retrieve the treasure or call off the hunt after he retrieves the treasure. He actually contemplated calling off the search for a little bit, but then he actually reversed course and said, I'm going to continue on. And the reason why was because he said, after a long deliberation and discussions with friends, I have decided that stopping the search would not be fair to the thousands who have searched the Rockies and gone home with wonderful memories that will last them forever. A number of family members who have been estranged for years have reunited to join the search. We like to say to people, it's not in that really tough terrain. It's in a place where an 80 year old man can get it safely. Despite Forrest's insistence that the treasure wasn't in a dangerous place and the police chief's plea to call off the hunt, at least three more treasure hunters died. Eric Ashby was a man who had been living in Colorado Springs and he went to hunt for the treasure. And he was on the Arkansas River in a raft when it flipped in June of 2017. Jeff Murphy died after a 500 foot fall in Yellowstone National Park. It wasn't confirmed until 2018 that Jeff had been searching for forest treasure when he fell. On March 17, 2020, Michael Wayne Sexton and an unknown travel partner set out to find the treasure in Dinosaur National Monument, which sits along the Utah-Colorado border. The pair was reported missing, and Michael was later found dead. His partner was treated in the hospital and later released. I think, too, people who hear about it, maybe they're lacking a little bit of hope or they're looking for something different. You know, they hear the story and they cling to it thinking, this is a new adventure, and, like, if I find some treasure along the way, then cool, and they kind of get obsessed with it and they want to be the one to find it. At least five deaths and multiple rescue missions related to the hunt, costing millions of dollars and hundreds of hours of manpower, caused a division in New Mexico on the local opinion of Forrest Fenn. He's sort of like this mythical creature guy. He's this person that people like tell their kids about. And so he's got this kind of folklore-esque vibe about him. They kind of put him on a pedestal almost because they just get so wrapped up into his story and the tradition of it. So there's the team that says Forrest Fenn did nothing wrong because he put the treasure there, he wrote the poem, and he told people basically go at your own risk. Then the other camp basically says, hey, these five people are on your hands because you were the one that inspired them to do this. As the search continued, so did the controversies. There were those who falsely claimed to have found the treasure. They can't produce a photograph. They can't describe the contents of the chest, so you know, I know that they're bluffing. There were lawsuits, including one in which a treasure hunter accused Forrest of fraudulent statements about the treasure. The lawsuit was later dropped. Nobody is going to accidentally stumble on that treasure chest. They're going to have to figure out the clues and, and let the clues take them to that spot. Even Forrest's own family became targets. A man named Francisco Chavez admitted to stalking Forrest's granddaughter because he said he was convinced she was the treasure. Apparently, he found out where um, Forrest's daughter lived and turned, you know, granddaughter. He would send packages 
uh, to Horace Fenn with weird riddles about why he believed his granddaughter was the treasure. At one point, Horace Fenn wrote to the judge and the attorney saying, we all fear for our lives. We're wondering if we should get guns. He was arrested on charges of stalking. In June 2020, Forrest made an announcement on his blog. The treasure had finally been found. Well, I, actually, I was a little bit shocked because they hid it in a pretty good place and lots of people over the years couldn't find it. But this man followed the clues in my poem and they took him right to the treasure. And that was what it was all about. At first, Forrest wouldn't give many details. But the hunter, who remains anonymous, eventually revealed the treasure's general location. In classic Forrest Fenn fashion, he has been releasing very few details about where it was found and who found it. All he has said is that a man from back east was the one who found the treasure. It was found in Wyoming. People were shocked because I think a lot of the searches had been concentrated here in New Mexico and Colorado. Fenn said that he knew it was true because the person emailed him photos and told him exactly where he found it. And Fenn has said he will never reveal who they were. So it's gonna be on the onus of the person who found the treasure to come out and say themselves that they found it. Although the hunt for this treasure is over, more conspiracy theories have only blossomed since its discovery. Some people are saying Forrest Fenn is testing us. There were pictures of Forrest holding the treasure. And so people are like, the pictures would have been any treasure that he had. Some people say, well, only the true treasure hunters know that this is a test by Forrest Fenn, and it is still out there. Some people are saying the controversy finally caught up with him and that he decided to stop the search. Others question if the search was ever real at all. I think most people thought, one, it was a hoax, and two, if it was ever found, it would be found like hundreds of years from now. This thing was going to be buried forever. We would never know the truth. We would never know if it was a hoax or it was never real because no one was ever going to be able to find it. Someone finds it all of a sudden 10 years later. And I think people were like, wait, what? It was real this whole time? One thing is for certain, Forrest Fenn's legacy will live on. Generally speaking, it's been a good thing. A lot of people have really enjoyed the mountains and I get emails from them and they say they're going to keep coming back. That was one of my motives in hiding the treasure. But it has now been found, so the search is over. One thing about the state of New Mexico is they love their tradition. And so Forrest Fenn lives in our community. He's part of our community. And we are so lucky that he's part of our New Mexico culture. So we're going to celebrate him. But I do think there's a part that is a little sad that this chapter has kind of come to an end. After our initial interview with Shelby, Forrest Fenn passed away on September 7, 2020. Police say he died in his home of natural causes. He was 90 years old. Forrest Fenn's death adds a little bit to the mystical kind of nature of the whole thing. And I think, um, you know, when they tell the legend of, of Forrest Fenn, they'll talk about the timing too. He died two months after seeing his life's work come to fruition. Yes, it was dangerous. No one is discounting the people who died in the search or the people who got injured. But I think it's also important to note that Fenn's mission was to get people outside, to bond with their family and friends, to have something exciting to look forward to. And I think he accomplished that. What do you think? Was Forrest Fenn's treasure hunt a hoax? Did he accomplish his mission of getting more people to explore the outdoors? Let us know in the comments below. I'm Aaron Burrell, and thanks for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel, Stitch, for new episodes of Dispatches from the Middle.